is your meme mom. Welcome to another episode of I spent a lot of money on old stuff. Since you guys seem to have enjoyed the last one where I tried on a dress that was over a hundred years old, I thought I'm gonna show you what came in the mail last week. Is my address here? This baby. I was a little terrified opening it because it came all the way from the States and what it contains is approximately 150 years old. So I was a little worried opening it, but it turned out it's it's in an okay condition considering how old it is, and it is acrinoline, ladies and gentlemen. A damn crinoline! And I was like, oh my god. God, I have a crinoline. Obviously, I'm not gonna wear it. Not only because it's old as hell, but also because it's too small for me. So, let's have a look at this baby. It's not huge, which led me to believe that it's an 1870s crinoline slash basil a transitional period one but then it doesn't really have much back volume if you know what I mean it's made of those tiny little bones made of really flexible and soft metal like when it came in it seems to have been a little, a little bit squashed when when it was put into this envelope the top bit was kind of like smashed and I was like, uh-uh, that doesn't look good. But it turns out you can easily just sort of, sort of shape it. So when it was squeezed in, I could just, you know, do this and it would go back to its original shape. So that's really interesting. I did not expect it to be that adjustable when it comes to the shape. Like literally you could just make it like that and then just go back to this shape in a second. Also the bones are incredibly narrow, probably like a max of two millimeters wide and that's another thing I was a bit surprised about because I did not expect it to be that tiny. The bones are covered in cloth and like there, there are those kind of like cotton boning channels that I think, I don't think they put the bones inside when they were making the crinoline, I think it came out like this already, like the boning was just already in the cloth because you can see those little um, metal sort of boning ends, uh, sort of like clasps, keeping it together. Overall it's not in a bad condition. The worst part is this bit here and I would, I'm gonna have to fix it because it doesn't look good and I'm afraid it's gonna fall apart. So this bit here definitely needs some work and also the waistband is so tiny. Like I, I kind of thought it's gonna be like at least it's gonna fit me. Uh, it turns out no. Turns out it's way too small. It's like, I'm gonna have to measure it actually, but it's I don't think it's more than 58 centimeters. So apart from being made of those small channels, it has those uh, vertical tapes and these are meant to hold the boning in place and sort of give it the shape. They are also secured in place with tiny metal pieces, which is interesting co construction wise. Now that I'm thinking of it, it does look like it like it had some additional bo oh, oh my god. Oh my wait a minute. So what is kind of mysterious is that these tapes have tiny holes so the boning can go through and then it's kind of clasped in place with a metal piece. What's funny and I I'm not sure what to think about it is that there are still some channels right here together with these huge pieces that look like they, there used to be boning inside it and it does have some signs of, of wear and use in it like it does look like it had some boning inside and it's been cut out so I'm thinking maybe that that has been done to sort of adjust the shape of the crinoline later when it changed and it you know the fashionable shape changed a bit and and the back was slightly accentuated or maybe after the back was accentuated I don't know but it seems to be that some adjustments have have been made here because the, cha the channels are empty but you can clearly see some rusty uh, stains and also this bit here looks kind of suspicious and it does feature uh, some sort of wire so the question is, would that wire have been a boning channel? What I think happened, these only have holes and remains of boning on this side and not on this side, but it's also the very center. So we would not have any boning right below our stomach. So I'm thinking there used to be some sort of construction 
around the bum that was either supposed to be either supposed to give a lot of volume or it was just a flat continuation of of whatever is happening here and it has been removed for some reason I don't know why but it's fascinating so let's measure the waistband because I think that's something that's quite interesting so the waistband is apparently around 62 centimeters but uh, you have to remember that it was supposed to it was supposed to go in this piece so you would need some sort of a couple of centimeters at least additional so you can just you know close it so at least I think two centimeters so I'm thinking no original waist of whoever was wearing that would have been around 60 centimeters or smaller which is how many inches is that where, where did it go which is around 23 inches or even less considering that women back then used to have smaller waists uh, not only because of the use of the corsetry but also because of the diet, malnourishment, all of the other factors. That is not a crazily small waist at the time, I think. 60 centimeters for someone petite is not a huge deal, to be honest. And also, I'm thinking this would not have been worn by someone super tall, because usually crinolines would end around, let's say, 20 centimeters above the ground, like it would, it would reach above your ankle. And if I actually, if I hold it, above the floor it's literally like a meter like you could just have a look where my waist is and where where the waistband is so it does look like someone small has been wearing it but then you know maybe it was just a short crinoline so I'm not gonna try it on because a it's not gonna fit and B the smallest hoop would barely fit my hips and I just don't want to destroy it so I'm gonna put it on a mannequin, hopefully it will not be damaged by doing that. I will be very careful, uh, just so we can see sort of the shape it gives and the silhouette it gives. And also see how nice and collapsible this is. That's the stereotype about crinolines that just annoys me so much. It's like, how did they sit in that? Well, maybe they just did this. <laughs> the whole thing just collapsed. <laughs> It, you know, it's not that difficult. It was not like something stiff that would just go like that when you sit. Because these babies were just like air, you know? And you know, going through the doors was not such a big deal because it just squeezes, you know? It's not a very stiff construction. It is adjustable, it is movable, squeezable, flexible, whatever you call it. Let's put it on a mannequin. I'm just, I'm just gonna sit on the floor like a true slab because there is no other way I can show you the crinoline. So here is what it looks like. As you can see it's not super huge. If you if you keep in mind that there would have been several petticoats worn over it. The shape does does remind me of 1870s. At the, the beginning of 1870s or maybe like the transitional period of late 1860s because you can see that as the hoop skirt goes down, it sort of expands slightly to the very, like at the very bottom. The last two, three, maybe even four hoops. I am honestly not sure what the exact time period of this would be because, as as I said before, it seems to have been adjusted slightly. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna rotate the mannequin for you, <laughs> just so we can have a better look. Oh, see how it swooshes nicely? Can you imagine it going like this when someone's walking? That's gorgeous. Also, I determined that this is the front because it has the clasp and the front closing and also because those two tapes would not have been connected because there are no signs of any boning in between and fronts were usually left open as it is. This is the front. It looks slightly funny because the mannequin is actually wider than the crinoline itself, like the hips are bigger than the first hoop, which again leads me to believe that uh, a person wearing it was was probably quite small. And then you have the side. So we can also see the back volume, which also leads me to believe that this is definitely post-1864, because that's when the crinolines, hoop skirts and generally skirts started gaining volume at the back. So it would start off with those trains and generally speaking crinolines would have been longer at the back and it will later evolve into the bustle so this clearly looks like there is something going on at the back rather than at the front so that's why I'm guessing it's post 1864 and again just have a look at how collapsible this is oh it looks oh it looks like this 
this toy I used to have in the 90s. Sorry about the odd background, these are my costumes. I have not murdered people and I don't keep them um, in my room. Why is it so low all of a sudden? So anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed this. I don't think there is much more to, sh to be shown. It's quite a simple construction. The last thing I want to point out is how small this actually is. And I don't mean small as in petite, but I mean when you think of crinolines, when you think of hoop skirts or bustle dresses, you usually think of huge volume because on fashion plates you see those magnificent, gigantic dresses. But it's important to remember that in day-to-day -day lives, even if you could afford wearing a crinoline or bustle every day, it would probably be much smaller. Like, it's same with the difference between the day dress and a ball gown. Ball gowns were not supposed to be worn every day during the day. They were supposed to be worn on balls or events that happened in the evening. That meant that they did not have to be practical at all. But these types of crinolines, I'm guessing they would be like a practical day-to-day -day accessory. Day dresses were usually much smaller in, in like, volume. So this crinoline, the bottom hoop, which is the widest, is 170 centimeters, which also is... I hate having an international audience, damn it. Which also is 67 inches, which is not huge. Um, to be completely honest, it's tiny. A Regency dress that has a really like narrow sleek skirt would have probably at least a two meters hem. So this is really small. This could go underneath a Regency dress. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed seeing this glorious piece of history. It is probably the oldest thing I own at the moment, uh, which hopefully will change someday. <laughs> And let me know what you think about it. Let me know if you have ever seen an exempt example of a crinoline or a bustle cage and how different was it from this one. If you can guess the time period, let me know what you think. I I'll be interested to, to hear what happened to the framing of this video. It's, it's completely died. I'm off because I need to make money to buy new pieces. So see ya.